Welcome to Frazier and Dieter's Culture of Compliance podcast series, where we discuss compliance as a competitive advantage in today's marketplace. I'm Sabrina Serafin, partner and national leader of Frazier and Dieter's Process Risk and Governance Practice. Today, we're talking to Anil Carmel and Travis Howerton of C2 Labs, a company that aims to simplify and automate regulatory compliance. Anil founded C2 Labs to develop innovative solutions to accelerate digital transformation within government and highly regulated industries. And as an early pioneer of cloud technologies at Las Alamos National Laboratory, Anil continues to advance the state of the art supporting new compliance standards and practices for the Cloud Security Alliance and the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Anil, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much, Sabrina. Pleasure to be here. Now, Travis is the co-founder and chief technology officer of C2 Labs, where he builds on past experiences like serving as the CTO of the National Nuclear Security Administration and a senior executive with Bechtel Corporation, leading strategic technology programs for highly regulated industries. Travis, welcome. Hello, thanks for having us. So we've asked Anil and Travis to join us today to specifically talk about the idea of continuous compliance. I think this term will really resonate with our listeners because it captures the increasingly difficult situation facing compliance executives, especially those who serve in the highly regulated industries. So first, can we talk a little bit about the regulatory landscape and what companies in highly regulated industries are trying to manage today? Well, there are numerous regulations that exist um, uh, for both the regulator and the regulated, and the regulatory burden is, is increasing. We've got uh, new privacy regulations that are coming up uh, within the United States. You've got uh, uh, GDPR in Europe, uh, CCPA in California, Virginia is about to pass privacy leg legislation, um, not to mention financial compliance requirements, uh, government compliance requirements like NIST uh, has a, a new special publication, 853 Revision 5, uh, which is going to require all uh, federal government systems to be compliant with this new standard. Um, over the course of several years. So given the increasing burden of compliance requirements and the uh, associated burden with completing compliance artifacts and creating them, um, really we need to try to understand what is a new way to, to really develop continuously compliant documentation. Okay, so given the regulatory landscape, could you explain what you mean when you talk about continuous compliance? Yeah, so you know when when you think about compliance, compliance today is done using a myriad uh, amount of labor and point solutions, uh, creating compliance artifacts and uh, word documents and Excel spreadsheets um, that serve as a point in time of your compliance uh, to a given regulation or regulations. Um, the challenge is it takes a lot of labor to create these artifacts, and they're instantly out of date the moment that they're created. So, and it takes a lot of labor to, to, to pull all this information out of these different point solutions. Um, you know, similarly, when you're developing new technology for organizations, um, you know, in the, in the past, developers would create that technology, hand it over to system administrators who would review that application and then promote it um, into production. Um, so this concept of, development operations or DevOps was born where it was allowing these groups to collaborate and quickly roll out systems to production in a automated fashion. So what I'd like to posit is perhaps bringing that concept of DevOps to compliance and something we could potentially call regulatory operations or RegOps, where we're combining these cultural philosophies of how we do compliance, our practices and tools to increase our compliance of our applications and our services against these regulatory standards that we're required to be uh, compliant with at a very high velocity and increasing our state of compliance and trust at a faster pace than done before. 
that's a great concept, but I, I believe that some of our listeners may not fully understand what DevOps entails. Can you give us some, some background into that? Yeah, definitely, Sabrina. Well, so the DevOps model, um, as defined by, we'll use a, a, an industry leader in, in uh, the cloud, Amazon Web Services. Um, their definition is it's a combination of cultural philosophies, practices, and tools that increases an organization's ability to deliver applications and services at high velocity. So it allows organizations to evolve and improve products at a faster pace than organizations using traditional software development and infrastructure management processes. So it's really about increasing the pace of how you're deploying applications in the DevOps model versus a traditional approach, right? So you're, the, the DevOps model allows, um, really employs these practices to automate pro processes that are historically manual and slow as defined by Amazon Web Services. So it uses technology, it uses tooling, it uses services that help staff operate and evolve applications and allow folks to independently accomplish tasks that would normally require help from other, other teams. So allowing this DevOps model to really underpin and um, inform how regulatory operations might leverage a similar model is really how RegOps was born, in our view. So, and I think this is an important point. Uh, you're saying that companies can achieve continuous regulatory compliance more easily and effectively by adopting tools and services that apply the principles of DevOps which is all about aligning regulatory compliance with the pace of IT and business. Exactly. Yeah, so DevOps, you know, really now in this model, RegOps, is this cultural transformation where you're coupling new practices and tools that allow teams to collaborate effectively, allow teams to build trust and increase velocity. The reality is com companies are moving at an incredibly rapid pace, which increases their risk of being non-compliant. So changing the way we approach compliance, leveraging this RegOps mindset will give companies an incredible edge in staying continuously compliant. Travis, in one of your blogs, you wrote about digital transformation as inevitable, unstoppable, and ubiquitous. And the inherent tension between compliance and transformation was discussed. Can you tell us about that? Sure thing. And so I think when you talk to most CEOs today, they would tell you that digital transformation is the lifeblood that's going to fuel their business. They all know that they have to ride that wave to be successful and to dominate in their market. They also know that if they get left behind, they may not exist in 10 years. And so nearly every company knows they've got to be doing this, but according to Gartner and others, almost two thirds of them say they're way behind or not successful in their transformation initiatives. And so what we think is that compliance is the equal and opposite force to digital transformation. It's the thing that slows everything down and makes it harder to do because they don't want to add new risk. They're worried about failing audits. They're worried about breach and what may happen if uh, they have compliance problems in this, these well understood programs and systems that they've built over 20, 30 years. And so we thought we've got to find a way to help companies knock that down. And that's where RegOps was born. And so as part of that, we don't think we're pushing just a tool. We'll be one of many tools in this new RegOps movement, but we think it's kind of like the early days of agile project management. And so um, in this similar sense, we put out our, our uh, compliance manifesto, which basically gives you a, a set of principles you can use when thinking through how you apply RegOps in, inside of companies and organizations. And so it starts with not bashing regulators. Um, regulations are good. Um, they keep us safe. They keep us secure. They're written by well-intentioned people. That being said, when people do bash it, it's because they're expensive, they're hard, to, they're hard to follow. So we think our second principle is that they should be affordable and transparent and easy to use. Um, we also believe that anything you do more than once that you should try to automate, which is really where RegOps comes in and the tooling comes in. Um, this is still one of the last bastions of paper empires where you just get huge stacks of paper 
that are created by hand. And we think there's broad applicability in how you might automate that. Um, we also think it should be simpler and less risky to go through an audit. You shouldn't be worried about losing your job and uh, having audit findings that put your company in a bad position. So that transparency and real-time nature, uh, which is the next thing, again, that real-time evidence, which is core to our Red Jobs principles, means risk falls because you know the problems before the auditors get there. It's not an after the fact audit or data call you do. It's just part of how you do business now. We also think you have to change incentives for regulators and the regulated to make it easier for both sides to have mutually beneficial incentives that move everybody forward um, against those regulations that are so important. Um, even though we're tool vendors, we think it has to be technology agnostic and should leverage standards because you don't know how the world's gonna change in two years, much less 10. So as we move into a reg ops world, um, a standards-based approach can help people enter it with less risk, less technology disruption over time. And then another thing we've started with is our core tool that we put out is free because we think compliance shouldn't be unaffordable. And so we have free tools to help people get started. And then we have enterprise class tools you can grow into and unlock additional value in the paid version um, as you scale and get more mature in your reg ops practices. And so, and then the last thing is just do no harm. You know, it's a new world. Um, we're doing new things in different ways. And so we should always be cognizant to measure what we're doing. Is it truly better? And if it's not better, stop it. Um, and so taking some of those agile, um, DevOps techniques that worked in the past, applying them to RegOps and really fundamentally transforming how compliance is done in organizations across the globe is kind of our vision and mission and, and what we're setting out to do as a company. Travis, I'm fascinated by the concept of a compliance manifesto. How do you find your clients are best applying those concepts? So I think right now with our customers, we're in the very early stages of this. And so it's a bit of a crossing the uh, chasm problem where we found some thought leaders who can share that vision with us. And what they're really doing is finding, if you take a lean view of their process and going sort of end to end, where are the bottlenecks where paper and compliance are slowing us down? And out of those bottlenecks, which ones of those lend themselves to automation? And this is more vision than practice today in the sense that you can't necessarily automate 100% of everything today right out of the box, but you might be able to get to 60, you might be able to get to 80. And what we're working with is customers who have that vision, who have the expertise, who are willing to lean in with us and find those discrete processes where, why am I issuing a data call every quarter to my active directory guy to go give me logs to go pass this audit? I could script that and I could get it every day or every week or every month. And the AD guy's going, you're never gonna bother me again. This is wonderful because I have a real job and you're a distraction, right? And so um, that's where we find it is you find sort of these thoughtful leaders who share our vision and, and are excited about getting there. And then you combine it with finding where's the greatest pain in the organization and getting rid of it. Right. And so then you get sort of that grassroots support for what you're doing, because this thing that was super painful for them to do manually is now completely gone and automated. And so bringing those things together and then wrapping software around it and automating everything we can using our reg ops principles and our compliance manifesto is how we're working with customers today. Thank you, Travis. And we will provide a link to the blog where our listeners can read about the compliance manifesto. And as we start to wrap up, do you have any closing thoughts you'd like to share with our audience? Yeah, so, you know, RegOps, just like DevOps, it's not going to happen overnight. It is a cultural movement um, that is going to allow companies to really embrace continuous compliance. Um, and it's part of this longer term cultural transformation of the market. Um, and how companies approach compliance. So, um, you know, this RegOps movement will allow compliance professionals to move from a reactive stance to now taking on a strategic role within their organization that allows your compliance professionals to protect the company from risk and its associated costs.
From my perspective, the thing to really think through is if you're a CEO of a large organization and you're thinking about how do you win in the next generation digital economy, when digital transformation hits your industry, how are you going to survive? How are you going to thrive? One of the key areas you can focus on is pulling costs out of compliance, automating things, and really allowing your organization to move faster. It's one of those great levers that organizations have to unlock productivity. Just imagine if you could, your business could move at the speed of the cloud and at the speed of automation, at the speed of machines, instead of always being held back by these archaic, paper-based manual processes. We think customers who adopt and understand RegOps will help be winners in this next generation economy. And we wanna be the company that helps them get to where they need to be that automates a lot of this sort of slow, archaic processes they have in place and reimagines a world um, of compliance without paper that moves at the speed of business. And, and that's what excites us. What would you consider the low hanging fruit for organizations that are trying to digitize their compliance process? I'll take a, take a high level approach to that. You know, a first, you know, and I'll also state that, you know, it's very important to know that Compliance is a people-driven exercise. It's always gonna take people to understand risk um, and understand your state of compliance. So really employing automation where it makes sense um, is really you know, a foundational principle of, of RegOps for both the regulator and the regulated. Um, so you know, understand your compliance obligations, you know, it's the first step. So get, get, get your hands around, you know, what, are, what are your compliance requirements? Um, and then, Employ digitization where you take those compliance obligations and you put them into a digital pl digital platform um, and then determine what are those processes and steps that are indeed repeatable that can be automated um, and employ automation leveraging tools and leveraging services um, to to really uh, bring the benefits of DevOps to compliance in this RegOps model. Travis? Yeah, I would say the low hanging fruit is a couple of things. Anywhere where you know you have data, it's just you're you're taking people to go manually fetch it, or you've got some paper-based form that you're routing around, or something's going outside the system for something to happen, and you're waiting. And so waiting's kind of death in DevOps because waiting's what slows everything down, right? And so anything where you feel like there's waiting, or anything where you feel like there's manual collection, um, to build on what Anil said. Um, the thing we'll never try to do is replace people's brains and the intrinsic value they have. Because it's always going to be a person who sits across the desk from an auditor and defends the program. It's always going to be a person who accepts risk on behalf of the company. But machines can help that person be empowered with better information to do their job more effectively and to get them out of this reactive mode where they're scared to touch anything um, because they're afraid of what will break and what risk will happen and get them into a more proactive mode where they're using their mind more and they're using their hands on keyboards less to get their job done. And so I think that's where the low hanging fruit is and understanding that the job is not to get rid of all the people in compliance. The job is to strengthen sort of the effectiveness and the power of those people so they can do their job better because they're important and they're valuable and they're necessary. And Neil and Travis, I want to thank you both for being with us today and discuss this really exciting view of compliance. And to our audience, thank you for listening to Frazier and Dieter's Culture of Compliance podcast. And please join us for our next episode as we continue to discuss transforming compliance requirements into investments in your business. Thanks for listening to one of Frazier and Dieter's branded podcasts. To learn more, connect with us on LinkedIn or visit us at FraserDieter.com and be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode.